Liberal Viewer presents. So one thing I like about watching MSNBC and the Rachel Maddow show in particular is that I see coverage there of important social justice stories I rarely see covered elsewhere in the corporate media, which was the case last week when Rachel Maddow began her program with a segment that included the story of the producer of the movie The Hangover, Scott Budnick, who also spent time as a volunteer teaching writing at the L.A. County Jail, putting him in a position to witness some of the brutality there and leading to this news. Today in Los Angeles, Mr. Volunteer of the Year, the man who was the producer of The Hangover, had a sworn legal declaration released by the ACLU in which he describes the multiple times he was in Los Angeles jails and saw sheriff's deputies beating people up. People who were imprisoned there, people who were, who were not fighting, not resisting, not provoking anything, not doing anything to deserve getting beaten up, but getting beaten up and getting, in some cases, getting beaten up badly. And when Rachel Maddow says people were beaten up badly, she's referring to information like this. Uh, Mr. Budnick in his declaration says things like, quote, I then saw the deputy grab the inmate's head and smash his head into the wall hard. It was so hard that I could hear an audible crack when the deputy slammed his head against the wall. At no point did I see the inmate do anything to any of the other prisoners or the deputy. In fact, the inmate was very respectful for the de to the deputy. As after I saw this, I, I quickly went back inside the classroom. The biggest jail in the world, the biggest jail in the country, and the biggest jail in the world uh, is now in trouble. And the reason the biggest jail in the world is in trouble is because what Scott Budnick described there was not an isolated incident. In fact, the ACLU's documented many such eyewitness accounts, including from actual victims like Conrad Gerbevac, who was never charged with or convicted of anything, but spent several days in the L.A. County Jail cut off from any outside contact, experiencing this kind of treatment at the hands of sheriff's deputies. They handcuffed me and they were trying to dislocate my shoulders. They had the, they carry flashlights like mag, mag lights and stuff. And they took me to the back room and they were just beating my head. It was the right side against uh, a glass partition. And they did that over half a dozen times. And um, then that's when the uh, floor supervisor came and asked me what had happened. And I told him that your two deputies did this to me. And he had left and said that he'll be right back. And the white deputy told me to change my story or I'm going to be in big trouble. I felt threatened. And um, when the supervisor came back with the camera, they made me change my story to say that I had did this to myself. Uh, that's pretty outrageous, but again, not an isolated incident, as you can hear more brutality described by an even more disinterested witness, Catholic chaplain Paulino Juarez, in this clip. I see these three deputies beating this person, an African-American, and uh, I'm sorry, they were punching him I never see his hands because those rows always the inmates walk with a uh, handcuff and I never see his hands trying to protect himself and and they he just was saying stop please stop stop I'm doing nothing wrong and then because the punch he, he fell and I, I, I hear when he, and one of the deputies, he came and he was on, on, on his back and he was punching him here on the neck, here. And then he stopped and the other is kicking again. And then this deputy, he just moved and he saw me when I was, but I, I, I didn't say, I just, I was afraid. I live, but when I, I, I live, I saw the body lying down on the floor with blood around his, his head, his, the shoulders on the floor. Huh, that's tough just to listen to. And again, none of these are just isolated incidents, but are among the many cases documented in the ACLU's recent report titled Cruel and Unusual Punishment how a savage gang of deputies controls L.A. County jails. The ACLU also produced a video summarizing the brutality, including a reference to over 100 witness statements just since last year 
beginning this clip. I've investigated jails and prison systems around the country, and really there is nothing to equal the horror of what I've seen in the Los Angeles County jails. How does it get to the point that a 26-year-old male that weighs 140 pounds is beaten on by five or six people? How does it happen? Now, that last story is particularly egregious because the victim, Gabriel Correa, was just visiting the jail to see his younger brother when sheriff's deputies left him looking like this, which was one of the final outrages Rachel Maddow pointed out back on her show last week here. It is not about whether or not you like the person who the guy in the uniform is beating up. What this is about is the fact that the guy in the uniform is us. But that is in our name. This is a democracy, government of, by, and for the people. What sheriff's deputies did to this visitor, a visitor to the L.A. County Jail, that's us. That's us. And that's right. In a democracy, when the government beats people, it's everyone's responsibility, which is why I'm asking my viewers to join me in signing a petition asking for the sheriff, Lee Baca, to resign and asking for the abuse to end at bit.ly slash stop the brutality because... I agree with that quote attributed to Dostoevsky that the degree of civilization in a society can be judged by entering its prisons, but I want to know what you think. Can the degree of civilization in a society be judged by entering its prisons and its jails? And if you do agree, will you sign the petition to stop the abuse at the world's largest jail using the link at bit.ly slash stop the brutality? I, YouTube, you decide.